Hey everybody, Merry Merry Christmas. My name is Doug with 2 Plus Tough. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, it has been a harrowing year for many of us and I just wanted to extend this little bit of time if maybe you needed an excuse to talk away for some family, have some quiet zen time. I understand I'm somebody who gets uh, social anxiety. So if you're just looking for a way to kind of duck out of reality for a little bit during the holidays, I wanted to provide that. So friends, very Merry Christmas to you, or whatever you celebrate, to be respectful. Um, and then I just wanted to say that uh, 2021, you know, the truth of the matter is um, the calendar is a construct and that the, the baggage we carry goes with us. However, that is not a negative thing. It simply means that um, we just need to be more conscious of being kind to one another. And um, I hope that you understand that and that you can always come here for some positivity, some relaxing vibes, that kind of stuff. Uh, and I would love to serve you in that way throughout 2021. So friends, thank you so much for joining me this last year. Um, we have some big news to cover today if you're watching this afterwards. So Games Workshop dropped a big reveal today, uh, which I honestly, I stopped going to like the community page for a little bit. Um, I just, I just kind of got buried under other stuff. And I didn't realize there was gonna be a Christmas reveal until like my phone blew up this morning. And um, initially, my wife and I were supposed to be on the road all day visiting family. However, our car broke down yesterday afternoon. And so we are homebound. So I thought, let's throw a show together. We'll, we'll just chat about the news and just kind of hang out for a little bit. So uh, I see <laughs> working really, it's a Christmas miracle. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna go hop over to the news thing here. Again, I don't expect a lot of people to be joining us at the time of recording. Uh, thank you guys for the ones who are, and uh, we'll just have a little chat about some crazy stuff that got released, or at least previewed today. Now, I'm not quite sure when it's going to drop. I'm pretty sure February is what we were told. Uh, okay, it's not just me. Uh, Two and BKB says that yeah, they didn't hype it as much as normal. Yeah, interesting. Interesting, interesting. So, uh, we should open up with Bugman's Warhammer Emporium. I like it. Merry Christmas, Ryan, to you. And so... Uh, earlier this year, we showed off this Sister of Battle model, the Palantine, or Palantine, however you say that. So, pretty cool. She's rocking a, a plasma pistol. And they're basically doing a box set similar to a lot of what they do in AOS. They've done a few for 40k. I feel like they've done more for AOS, to be perfectly honest. I'm not sure why I think that. Maybe it's just because they stand out more. Might be wrong about that one. But super cool set they get all the coolest dark eldar models to be perfectly honest with you if you're into 40k i believe this is the first box set um shy of their so the sisters of battle came out with the set when they first got released with like the battle tome and it basically was like the lumineth box uh if you remember that one and this is the first set that i can think of where they are included in another faction so i'm pretty sure it's like oh my god guys we made way too much of Dominions or whatever these units are called <laughs> put them in a box and so you get a uh, their tank a squad and the unique hero so that's actually I mean depending on the price point it's pretty minimal uh, sisters of battle stuff to be perfectly honest with you and then over on the other side we get dark Eldar and um, I love them uh, dark Eldars I I've always said uh, there's two armies that I regretted selling was the bone splitters and my dark Eldar because the Bone Splitters the first time uh, people just like refused to play against me because it was way back in the day when Cunning Ruck was the jam. Um, and then the Dark Eldar because I lost my job and uh, I had to, this is like what, three years ago now, had to have some money so I just liquidated everything I had and so I just wasn't quite ready to get rid of them. But yeah, so anyway, for the Dark Eldar you get a named character, Lilith Hesperix, a unit of Scourges, the Flying Guys. We have a Venom, which is a, I'm just going to say this, in terms of like this model range, people complain that they don't get enough love, but these models are stellar. Like, I understand people's complaints, and, and there are models in every faction that's not Space Marines that need some love, but my god, for the most part, Dark Eldar stuff, it just, it still looks baller. Uh, and then a unit of what looks like witches, yep, those are definitely witches. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean... To be honest with you, that's a, that's a great side for the Dark Eldar player. <laughs> and I'm sure it's coming out soon because um, their uh, codex, their ninth edition codex was already previewed, so. Yeah. Um, this box, um, on looking, feeling, feel very balanced forces. 
Okay, not maybe autocorrect got you there, uh, but they look balanced. I mean, yeah, because they don't have a ton of stuff. Elk girls are really great at taking out infantry, but my god, these girls can mow them down. I think it's going to be cool. So they're just showing off the Lilith model. I believe she was already out. I don't think she's unique to this box, if I'm not mistaken. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. And then we kind of go into the main event here. Oh, Geoff says, uh, sorry, Jeff. Uh, February, I plan to start my second AOS army. To which Wargame really says, what are you starting? I bet we know here. So, these are the Hedonites. We are getting Slanesh round two. And uh, to be honest with you, oh, she's new in plastic. She used to be resin, okay. Uh, but I feel like I saw the plastic variant before. Maybe it was previewed earlier, and now it's in the box set. That, that maybe is probably what it is. I probably just saw a picture of it earlier and I didn't think about it. So we have the Hedonites of Slanesh round two, hopefully with um, a bit more foresight into how summoning, they want summoning to work uh, compared to the last battle tome. Um, let's see, where's their little blurb here? From the grim darkness of the far future, our festive sleigh ride takes us to the mortal realms. In our last Warhammer preview online, we showed some of the incredible new Hedonites of Slanesh models that are on the way, including the legendary Sigvald the Magnificent. Well, Christmas is a time of excess, isn't it? Kind of. Uh, so let's share some more things that are coming, starting with the amazing Hedonites of Slanesh Battle Tome. Now, this is the one I assume um, is coming out in February. We know there's a Battle Tome coming out in February. I assume that's it. Here's the new cover. I think it looks sick. Um, to be honest, it, it um, the last one didn't grip me because it was just mostly demons. That's just not my jam. I'm much more interested in this, like where there's mortals and they're trying to like you know walk the path to glory and all that stuff. Uh, but what lies between? But sorry, but what lies between the covers of this extravagant tome? First up, uh, we have the chosen knights of the Dark Prince, the Sick Blade Seekers riding their exalted steeds of Slanesh into the heart of battle, they sever heads and limbs with their deadly glaives. Now, one thing I'm curious is that this is going to replace the current, oh, what are they called? Whatever the basic Seeker dudes are right now. Uh, chaos, we'll go Slanesh. I'm pulling it up so I don't embarrass myself too much. Hell Striders, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, Seekers of Slanesh are the demonettes riding the monsters. Hell Striders are the, the mortal ones. So I'm curious if these are replacing Hell Striders. But the Hell Striders are a dual kit, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, never mind. They're a different kit. They're a different kit than the uh, Seekers. Okay. So I'm assuming these are going to replace the Hell Striders. And these guys look incredible. I will say that the actual mount itself looks way more interesting than the current ones where... It kind of just looks like an anteater with rigor mortis. <laughs> These guys, you know, in terms of just the movement of the tail and little flaps on the end and that kind of stuff, I think they look way better. So let's see. Um, love all your reports. Keep up the great work. Oh, thank you so much, buddy. Uh, I'm a corn player, but these models look awesome, and I will probably, uh, probably get you into the the dark prince. Yeah, they are pretty cool. I um. I do like them. You know, this is honestly the unit that stands out to me the most. We saw the, obviously the Sigvald, we saw the kind of elite unit with him, um, the five man unit that can be built a few different ways, but I, these models to me are by far the most interesting looking, especially that leader with the, the brim going down the center. So love these guys. We're gonna continue on. If you prefer to bring the pain from a distance, the Bliss Barb Seekers, will be right up your street. Uh, with the speed of their mounts, they can unleash a volley of arrows from the perfect position on your battlefield. And so this is what I'm assuming is a dual kit um, because some of these mounts look identical <clears throat> but in terms of their footing and that kind of stuff. Uh, but it looks like a ranged variant. So that is really stinking cool. I think, let's see. Okay, it's just her. For some reason, I was looking at this picture and if you look, there's a, a gap between her and her saddle but it's because she's pushing up from the mound, like her legs do lock in. And the reason I point that out is because, uh, contrary to this, is the, oh, Plague Drones, where it's like the Nurgle flies and then there's like a, a demon riding it. And there's a gap between the rider and the mount 
for no reason. It's like literally they just didn't make the model fit on the mount. <laughs> and it's so frustrating when I was building those guys. I was like, I hate this. I actively hate it. <laughs> no, but for her, that's that's great. So she's just kind of propping herself up to get the shot because then you can see on everybody else, it's they're nestled into their saddles, right? So it's just a, it's a pose option rather than a model problem. But these are incredible. Um, you know, shooting cavalry in this game I find, personally, it's either super good, like say, Pistoliers from Cities of Sigmar, or you almost never see it, like Marauder Horsemen who just walk up and like throw javelins at eight inches, but you're like, but you're a horse. <laughs> at the end of the day, you're a horse, so we need, we need to do a little bit more than just move fast and shoot one spear. But uh, I totally get it. So I really do like these models quite a bit. I think this guy looks the best. Um, just the way he's sitting with his leg kind of arched back. He's taking the shot to the, what would be his left. So yeah, I'm very interested. Love the, the variety of skin tones, both on the riders and the mounts, uh, where some are more purple, some are more of the Rackarth flesh, you know, that kind of tan. And the same thing goes for um, the slender stuff. Because you know what I don't like? First of all, it's 2020, almost 2021. We don't need every person to be white. That's just boring looking. But also the fact that there's such a diversity within the skin tone range where like, obviously this is dark skin, but then this is like that weird, you know, a typical of chaos stuff where they make them like this weird, creepy ivory. And this is like one step between them and so on. So I, I don't know. I like I, the way they painted this in the studio. They did a fantastic job. Okay. So we've already seen a Slongor in the form of Slake Slash, a member of the Dread Pageant from the Dire Chasm core set. But how about a full unit? So what they mean is um, Warhammer Underworlds, the new set coming out, has a Slanesh Warband, and one of those models is a Slanesh, um, like, Ungor or Bulgor or whatever it is. The Slangor Fiendbloods uh, value slaughter at any cost, fighting with a frenzied disregard for their own safety. Now, we get to see some pretty baller dudes. Now, my understanding is that this is going to be a unit of three. Um, I don't know if that's accurate. Let me see. I think there's more total pictures at the bottom here. My understanding, yeah, is that's a unit of three. So I, I would imagine, rather than functioning like um, slung gore in the sense of gore being the unit from Beasts of Chaos, what if they're more like Bulgore, right? And where, where Bulgore, if you don't know, are like the Minotaurs. So that would make sense. Those are also in units of three. Uh, so would these guys be? And that would be really cool. Uh, it would also mean that their bases would be quite a bit larger. Um, they would be big, tanky things, which I would love to see in Slanesh. You know, they still get hurt easily, but you would have models with some weight on the board rather than everything just being fast and easy to kill. <laughs> so yeah, I like it quite a bit. Um, I hope they don't go the fiend route on those. The fiend, fiend, fiend. I don't know what you mean by fiend. Fiend route. Nah, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't follow that one. Sorry, buddy, llama juice. Um, but these are absolutely incredible looking. If, if it is just a three man kit, I am positive this is gonna be loaded to the gills with all different kinds of optional arms and heads and weapons and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if for no other reason, then you can see all of the, the joints, like the legs and that kind of stuff. They all have these nice clean breaks um, where you know you can reasonably put in a different arm and that kind of stuff. Oh, the Fiends of Slanesh. Duh, I'm so sorry. I forget, honestly. Um, Llama Juice, you win today's stream because uh, I forgot that they existed because you are correct. Nobody ever uses them. <laughs> So there you go, buddy. <laughs> I think they're cool models though, I will say that much. I'll tell you what, if I ever, ever, my, my tastes change and I get into a Slanesh army, I will be fiends heavy. <laughs> okay, finally we have the Bliss Barb Archers on foot. Okay, so we have the mounted version, here's the foot version. Uh, they're accompanied by a Bliss Brew Homunculus, my, they do not make this easy on me, who cooks up especially toxic concoctions for the archers to dip their arrows in before firing them. Now that's an interesting thing. So my question is, we have the Bliss Barb Archers on foot. They're accompanied 
by a bliss brew homunculus. My assumption is that's the unit leader who cooks up especially toxic concoctions for the archers to dip their arrows in. So my question is, in terms of rules, is it is it like um, the Ossiarch Bone Reapers where the, the leader of the unit acts in a very special and unique way? Because I, I'll be honest with you, like, I love the way that looks as far as like game mechanics wise. Wouldn't it be great if the leader of this unit, as long as they're alive, they can dictate what the special effects of the shots are. Like every round, like, hey, at the start of the shooting phase, this is what you get to choose, blargy blarg, you know what I mean? Like you get to choose, I don't know, monster killer arrows and it gives them like extra rend or something crazy. And then there's like, um, maybe ones that hurt larger units somehow. And you know what I mean? That kind of stuff. I think that would be a really cool design space. They touched on it with Ossiarch Bone Reapers. And then I feel like they kind of walked it back a bit. And and I was just like, no, 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 keep going. Uh, Rashawn, tactical archery, exactly. Um, but I will say this here, this, uh, I'm assuming it's the leader. This is my favorite model uh, that I have seen from the new Slanesh range. It beats Sigvald even. She's got a super power pose. She's she's doing the um, the anchor man. If you guys have seen the movie Anchor Man, where he's like they're at that fight in the alleyway, and um, Champ Kind, the sports guy, slugs a guy, fixes his coat, points at another one, and just like beelines it towards him and beats the crap out of him. That's exactly what I get here, and I love it. <laughs> um, I absolutely love it. See, my guess is it's more of a hits make the wounded unit not pile in or retreat mechanic. Uh, could could be all it says is that they they the leader has something to do with their arrows before they fire them so i don't know we'll find out we'll move along here um she looks rad i love the tactical rock that she's uh <laughs> leaning up against um I'm, i wonder how hard that is going to be to replace if you don't want that but yeah Uh, let's see, there's another model with that kit that has a big smoking sensor that is the homunculus. Okay, uh, I know I know there's some more pictures up elsewhere, so I'll go get those in a sec. Um, she just looks terrifying. Like, this person walking towards me, I would just immediately fear barf. Okay, and then we got her, uh, let's see what, and notable things here. <sighs> my only concern, I love this pose. My only concern is this arrow that comes out to the left because it goes over the base. And I, I could just see it's going to snap right there. So I do like it um, quite a bit. Everything from the way her headdress goes, her braids coming down the front. I don't know. It looks fantastic. These models are incredible. They're all like in these like amazing power poses. Like, can we just take a moment? Uh, let's see. Oh, it broke when you looked at it. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you meant my stream broke. I was like, oh God, what? Um, oh, Check in the chat here. Weston just started a Slanesh army and can't wait for these models. Also love your channel. Thank you so much, buddy. That means the world to me. Very happy Christmas to you as well. And I hope that this is a great Christmas present from Games Workshop. And you know that we're going to be covering it a bunch here on the channel when it comes to their lore because um, they got some stuff, you know? They got some units to talk about. And I'm very excited about that. I love that every model in this unit is just in this crazy awesome power pose of just like, come get it, you know what I mean? None of these people are folks that I want to like see in an alleyway. <laughs> I think I would just, just immediately, like I said, fear vomit or crap myself. Uh, so we got that one. This is probably the, probably the one I like the least, to be perfectly honest with you. I bet their arrow, because their arm is so far back, uh, I bet their arrow does not hang off, so ironically the one that I like the most is probably the most secure one, but that's alright. Everybody else is looking rad. And I'm sure, honestly, I would just sub in the one from the Underworlds game. I don't know why I don't like this one. I think it's because I'm not a fan of the face. Um, and yeah, I just, maybe, maybe I'd like it more if I saw it from the side. Because it's obviously lunging forward with the bow being drawn. So, we'll see. And then here is what I'm assuming uh, from someone in the chat, our homunculus with uh, whatever concoction he's brewing. I love the fact that we see him on the ground, kind of a kind of a weird 
pose. But I guess, yeah, because he would want to be down so that this thing is higher than him so everyone can stand around and like dip the arrows in as I'm assuming kind of what the design idea was there. Things that I like, um, one, there's skulls in there. Two, there's a hand, but obviously you can see both of his, so there's just like a random hand in there. I love it. Uh, and three, I have always loved the way Games Workshop does smoke. You know, lots of different miniature companies have different ways of uh, modeling smoke. It's kind of a hard, you know, vapid thing to kind of put a model to, but I have always liked that about GW, where I feel like there's always just enough of like a gentle breeze to where you can see the stuff that's always in the pot, the cauldron, you know, whatever the item is, and then the smoke billowing off the side. I think they have always been good at that. So I love it. This unit is so cool. This is our last model we have seen. Um, oh, it's her bow. I was like, what the heck is she holding? Yeah, it's her bow and it goes across her back. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, my only issue is that the Heat Knights just, were just released when they redid Demons to be immediately redone again. You know, I understand that. I do. I'm not, I'm, I'll never um, fault someone for saying that. Uh, that they're upset that, you know, stuff gets released too quickly in succession. And I totally, there are so many people who just dropped a bunch of money last year on uh, Heat Knights. Um, and, you know, kind of thought that their army was good to go. However, counterpoint... I also do not like the trend of Games Workshop releasing an army and then just forgetting about it, right? Like, when's the last time a Nidenith Deepkin player got excited for a new release? Like, never. <laughs> Ever since their stuff dropped, they got new rules in the Marathi book, and that has really been the only note that they've gotten. So my point is, I would rather have, you know, what is this? One, two, three, four, five kits, right? You got uh, Sigvald. The dual kit of the infantry, what I'm assuming is a dual kit of these guys, your Slongors, uh, and these gals. And I, I get six if you want to count the Underworld's Warband, but I mean, I don't really count those because half the time they don't become armies anyway. So it's interesting. Like, I'm sure that there are other armies. Oh yeah, someone pointed out Iron Jaws. Exactly, yeah. Um, I'm sure that there are many other factions that are warranting... Uh, of model updates and that kind of stuff. However, people come to this channel for the positive side and that's what I like to deliver. And my positive side is, hey, thank you Games Workshop for not releasing another faction that you ignore into the ether. That's all I got. <laughs> so, I, I, you know, I know that, um, oh, Llama Juice pointed out, every, almost everything in the last Hedonite book has been FAQ'd. And I would not be surprised if that was part of it. Um, you know, they had these models in development and realized that there was just an overabundance. Like if a book just doesn't work anymore with their new production speed in terms of like being able to, to work on these things, frankly now in the era of everyone working from home, how quickly, and this is an honest question because I don't actually know the answer, how quickly can they be like, okay, straight up, that book doesn't work, get started on a new one. And like, what is the time between that decision and when the book releases. I'd be very curious to know. Uh, let's see. Weston, do you think we will get a new character for the newborn or broken realms in this new battle tome or just lore for it? I don't know. I don't know if they want to have... I guess we don't really know enough about the newborn to know if it's going to be a, a, a tangible character in the game because none of the other chaos gods are. So if it is that kind of deity level thing for chaos probably not like we're never going to see a nurgle model or a corn model but if it's on par with say techless nagash those kinds of things then yes we simply don't know enough so that's that's all i got to throw out of that one uh let's see there's still plenty more to come from the new battle tome if you were thinking we're teasing you by mentioning that but not showing you more just yet that's exactly what slanesh would want <laughs> uh and that's that is it that is it for the big preview of the day and uh, I gotta say, I really do like it. Now, I'll be honest, um, this, this uh, is my favorite unit by far. This is an interesting one, because I can't, with the exception of fiends, and I wonder if these are going to be the quote unquote mortal version of fiends, because those are also in a, they come in threes, uh, and they kind of act as like the closest thing to a meat shield the army has, aside from chariots. 
Um, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. I'm excited if no other reason. It finally feels like Slanesh matches up with the other Chaos Battle Tomes. By that, I mean, if you play any of the other ones, Zinch, Korn, Nurgle, you have this awesome duality of mortals and demons where I feel like the Slanesh one... You know, even though the demons that we got in the last battle zone were phenomenal. Like, I, I really do love the Keeper of Secrets, and I like the Fiend models. Um, I forgot they existed, but I like them. <laughs> I forgot how much I like them. You know, like, even though we have supplements for the demonic side, it just felt very lopsided towards K uh, demons instead of mortals. So, I... I I'm all in favor of it. Um, if nothing else, yeah, like I said, it balances it out to the point where it feels like the other books. So good on everyone who's excited about this. Of course, uh, what's not mentioned here, but we do know about, of course, if you have the, um, oh, what is it called? Pain in Excess or whatever. The uh, the one that had, was it Daughters of Cain versus the Slanesh Force where you got the unique uh, Slanesh Champion. That model is also incredible. Um, yeah. Let's see. Hopefully each side has some presence. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm curious. I'm curious if they're going to either keep the summoning mechanic the way it is and just update it with all the FAQs and that kind of stuff because they're adding a lot of dimensions to this army now because they've introduced more hero choices, which does affect the way that they give and get um, depravity points. But my question is, uh, or if they're gonna like start from scratch with a new design philosophy uh, that we can all <laughs> wrestle with very very quickly. So I don't know. Um, they seem to be missing a mortal foot infantry choice. Well, here's the thing: we don't quite know everything about this unit yet. Um, we know that they are. Well, well, actually, put a pin in that one. Forget about what I was just about to say. If you think they're missing the mortal foot troop they do have i know it's in this one here hold on i'm so sorry for scrolling so fast someone once complained that it gets them like seasick okay we got sigvald yeah they have these guys uh which certainly act as mortals on foot they are a dual kit as well and they are more heavily armored so i would i would love a warband where there's just ranks of these guys moving forward being supported by these stellar archers um you know with some big old slongor trumpet in behind them that kind of stuff i love it uh let's see um rashan warseer i think slanesh got a better deal than most uh it looks yeah it the look feels very new uh, i think they needed to be new and updated uh in a way that wasn't just, quite frankly, sex references. Um, like, I like these guys, you know, and, and nothing about it, I don't know, nothing about it's too, too over the top in that regard. You know what I mean? Like, none of these are models that I'd be like, I can't show the children. You know, obviously they have a lot of bare skin, but there's nothing about them that is uh, rated R. How about that? <laughs> I don't want to word that. So I don't know. I think they're great. Uh, and I agree with you. I think they got a little bit ex extra love, and that's that's all right. Um, I I will say I am not excited for the Valentine's Day Slanesh themed things that I'm sure the community is going to create on their own, and uh, that's going to be awkward and cringy for all of us. So stay tuned for that. Uh, let's see, February, the month my wallet dies a horrible death. Absolutely. Um, do you think? Oh, that question got cut off. Um, Warcry really boosted chaos cultures in the realms. I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree. I was actually playing a game of Warcry with uh, my buddy like two days ago and uh, had a wonderful time. And then I got sidetracked by the owner of the store basically selling me on <laughs> Star Wars Legion. But I had a wonderful time. <laughs> um, Joan 500, do you think they will redo the old Skaven range anytime soon? I have not heard any whispers of that, but um, I'm, I have no doubt that they will at some point. It's just, it's one of their most iconic intellectual properties, but I'm not, it could be one of those things like maybe they wanted to do it, and then the second they started dipping their toe in, they're like, oh, we have way too much 
to to re-sculpt and that kind of stuff to do it anytime soon so they kind of kick the can a little bit maybe it's being worked on in the background uh, because that battle tome is huge with the number of units and it's also huge with the number of units that need an update either away from resin or metal in some cases so i could see that taking a bit however when it does drop i am sure that they are going to get the full uh, in terms of model line, Gloom Spike gets treatment where they introduce a ton of new kits that are multi-kits and all that kind of stuff. Um, the Grizzly, oh buddy, thank you so much. $10, thank you. That's just, oh, you're so kind. Uh, your comment, I'd like to see a new Nurkle update. I think it's the only battle tome from the first edition still. Do you think they'll get an updated one in the rumored third edition or do you think it's not that likely? Um, the What's funny is, you say it's the last one from the first edition, but it was, if I'm not mistaken, one of the first battle tomes that was made for second edition. The problem is second edition has evolved past what that book originally envisioned. Because if you remember, that was the first book we got for Chaos where um, we had summoning, but you didn't have to pay points for it. So people were like putting aside a couple points to summon five plague bearers, but that's way back in the day when we used to have to do that. <laughs> now it's free. So the book actually was a, a precursor of what was to come in second, <clears throat> but it came out during first, even though it was technically a second edition style book. Um, but to answer your question, do you think we have a lot to wait for? Well, I think in the next year, we're going to see a third edition drop. Uh, that would be my guess. My guesstimation, shoot from the hip. Um, as far as Nurgle stuff, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't heard anything. Um, I don't, I don't really keep up with the rumors and that kind of stuff. Uh, I just, I don't know. We'll see. Um, uh, let's see. John Penn was more refer referring to the, oh, like a horde based choice as a lot of it tended to be elite troops. You know what? I'm okay with that. I'm okay with no hordes. Um, we have an army that's uh, centered around perfection and becoming the best of the best. And so I can imagine them being very elite. Uh, or maybe, you know, this is a unit of 10 archers. I'm sure someone's going to find a list where they just take 60 of these guys and just a couple of people to act like a shield wall. Why? Because that's what Age of Sigmar competitive scene is like. And I'm not, a, I'm not opposed to it. I think that would look, still look stellar if they're painted halfway decent. So I think that's cool. But um, I'm okay with the, the melee variants being a little bit more elite. Yeah, I mean, and hey, if nothing else, you know, you can take all these sexy new models that just got released and, and you can splash in as many Reagan era marauders as you want. <laughs> and you can hate yourself the entire time. But one thing I'm interested in is the keyword synergy because there was a there has become a growing difference between the Slanesh keyword and the Hedonites keyword. And so I am truly curious how things like the Slaves to Darkness units will work in terms of their interactions with some of these units. Like what's going to be Slanesh based, what's going to be Hedonites based when it comes to the interactions between, you know, buffs, debuffs, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Um, those new Seeker mounts are going to be so much fun to paint. Absolutely. Yeah, these guys are incredible. I love, th this is actually my favorite one of certainly of the ranged variants where she just has the, uh, the face covering. I say, I say she, they all look vaguely feminine, but that's kind of the whole point of Slanesh, right? It's probably, it's probably both <laughs> or just a question mark. I don't know. Um, definitely liking the ostentatious look of the new range. Absolutely. It's very out there, very over the top. Uh, let's see. It was the first to have the new logo. Ideneth Deepkin, Daughters of Cain, Magkin of Nurgle, and Legion of Nagash are all technically first edition. Yes, because they came out before the new edition dropped. But, again, they were clearly designed with second edition in mind is kind of what I'm saying. But they are in that weird, vague area. Absolutely. Uh, let's see. Bly, it's so dirty to come out with one of these new Seekers right after the Shadow and Pain box. That's a fair point. <laughs> I got nothing for you. I, I hated those old Slanesh demon models. <laughs> Here, here's a really expensive box with a bunch of demon stuff. And um, so we see that you have some cavalry. Here's some way better looking cavalry. And you're like, 
Dang it, dang it, dang it. <laughs> oh, man. Um, in Memphis, I'm pretty much with you in this one. So I'm going to read his quote here. Um, I will say, though, while I personally despise anything slanish, I'm happy to see another range with a very co coherent, overarching aesthetic. Uh, and I absolutely agree. I think that's definitely a takeaway. It's like, I'm not interested in owning these models. I don't hate slanish for any reason. But uh, I'm very happy to see, like, this is going to look like a unified army on the table. And that makes me excited because it's good for the game, right? When someone walks up when you and your buddy are playing a game and they're like, oh, what the heck is this? Like that moment is so important and having a coherent range and that kind of stuff, it just, it works wonderfully. So um, I think we're seeing the same thing. That's hoping here at 40K. I'm not sure I follow that John here. I think we're seeing the same thing that's happening here that happened in 40k, i.e. Bivonic Astartes versus Heretic Astartes. Oh, I see. So, yeah, just kind of breaking down the armies a bit more and more, pulling them away from each other, for sure. Um, Louise, uh, freaking hyper-fast Archer Cav, imagine that in Total War. I this The more units they make for this game, the more I want to have an Age of Sigmar Total War title. That would be incredible. Can you imagine, like bringing AOS Nagash like you know forget forget the uh, old world version of Nagash where he was like powerful but he wasn't like a god <laughs> I just think that would be so freaking cool um, let's see 40k is also adding Sanctic Astartes and Arcana Astartes for Grey Knights and TS Arcana I'm not sure what the TS is but yeah, I'm on board. I'm on board. Um, I like it all. I hope you guys are liking this as well. Someone said they were uh, disappointed in today's reveals. I, Oh, Thousand Sons. Thank you, guys. Um, and I think that they were crazy and foolish. One guy was uh, like, I'm sad because it's not Soul Blight. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, man. This is a, this is a great day for modelers around the world. Because like, look at this guy. Come on. This guy is incredible. Look at that face mask. Ah, oh, I just love it. Give us thousand cents. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I like it quite a bit. Uh, I'm very excited, and I hope you guys are too. Let's see what we at time wise. We have been going for. For some reason, my clock's not showing me anything. Oh, okay, forty minutes. There we go. <laughs> it's like it's like no time. I was like, what do you mean no time? <laughs> Uh, Lord Master of Sotek was against Hedonites since they already have a second edition book. I, you know what? Hey, here's an official uh, Doug from Two Plus Tough stance. I'm not against anything that's um, new and shiny. If you like it, buy it. If you don't, don't. Cool. Because <laughs> if you don't like it, they're gonna figure it out and start making stuff that people are gonna buy. So I'm not against anything. Um, I don't, you know, it's just the, how I want to word this. The AOS community is so interesting compared to the 40K community. Cause over there, people are like, I'm tired of space Marines. They get everything. I'm tired of every release being a space Marine release. What about the Xenos? What about blank? You know what I mean? All this kinds of stuff. And I'm not disparaging them. They are accurate in that most of the releases are absolutely space Marine focused. Conversely, we're over here and we got releases that are like a shotgun blast. Like, we don't know, we don't ever know what factions come in next. Um, you would think it'd be the Poster Boys, Stormcast, but that's not true. Those guys need a lot of love um, in terms of like the way the rules are written and making all the units worth something. You know what I mean? And I just feel like I'm not against anything. If it's an Age of Sigmar release, I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> Take what I can get, and I say thank you, and that's, um, that's how it is. So, yeah. Inquisitor Thomas, I mean, to be fair, the 40K fans have a point. Yes, and I did make that clear. I want to make that very clear. It is absolutely accurate that dang near most of the releases for 40K are Space Marine oriented. So I'm, they're not wrong. My point is, is like I'm contrasting the people who complain about getting releases <laughs> you know what i mean it's just it, it, i don't i don't know 
again if you like it buy it if you don't don't uh the pose of this guy's weapon is not helping the uh, slanesh sex case at all but it is what it is uh let's see if stormcast get any love it will be in the next edition starter set probably i wouldn't doubt that i mean that would be a great place to reset although honestly that would be a bummer because because i want them to get a release that where they're not trying to balance new models on top of what already exists because that's what happened the last time right we got the soul wars book um and of course everything they just released was just the best and that's no fun um I would rather have a book when it's not tied to a major release. That way they can focus on like, okay, let's give everyone a reason to just buy all this stuff. You know, I mean, and honestly, at the end of the day, they have to make sales and that's fine. But like the rules they came up with in Broken Realms Marathi, where you're using a lot of that first generation original Stormcast models is amazing. And people love it and they ate it up. And it's so cool to see those units being used. So I think when they're not trying to push something or make a new wave or a new chamber or whatever sound like the biggest and baddest and bestest, I think they do better in terms of internal balancing of the books. So, I don't know. Um, I wonder if the if a new starter set will be accompanied by more easy to build sets for newcomers. That seems to be the way that they're doing things. So I like that quite a bit. Um... Drew, you nailed it. The Heat Knights book has been FAQ'd into oblivion. Uh, I get that it feels very soon, but this new book with new options is okay in my opinion. And that's kind of how my thought is, you know? I mean, um, there are a few battle tomes in this game that they're not bad in the sense of people cannot enjoy them. They're bad in the sense of um, the book as written doesn't function well in the game and then it requires a mountain of faqs so for example i mean uh on one end of the spectrum is is the old he knights book where it dropped and everybody was like uh this this doesn't help the game function like it is absolutely not a fun book because it doesn't like work within the normal parameters of the game on the flip side is the bad version which was like the first carriage and overlords book and if you are a ko player who played with that book you deserve a warhammer hero award but the, you know what I mean? There were two sides of the same spectrum of like, this game and this book are incongruous. <laughs> and I don't know what to tell you, GW. You gotta take another swing. And so, if that's what they're doing, I'm on board. Obviously, I think... Obviously, I think that because of the amount of models that are coming out, this was always the plan. It's not a quick fix battle tome, so to speak. Uh, but I'm here for it. John, honestly though, this leaves me hopeful that we will see new Emperor's Children within the next year. Yeah, that's great. Um, I know a lot of people love Emperor's Children. Um, that's the, if you don't know, that's the 40K Mortal Slanash Army. Uh, and I would love to see that as well. Can you imagine Power Armor guys riding these suckers? That would be so cool. <laughs> oh man. So anyway, friends, that's pretty much all I had. I just wanted to talk about my thoughts on these things uh, and tell you that... Um, there's a lot to be excited for in 2021 coming up. We already know, I believe, uh, believe that this is coming out in February is my understanding. Um, although it doesn't actually say it here specifically, we know that there's a battle tome coming. We just don't know it's specifically this one. But why would they preview it if it's not going to come up? So I don't know. But I just wanted to give you all a very, 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 Merry Christmas, and I uh, hope that you will join me throughout 2021. Of course, we're going to be exploring the lore for this book uh, and diving into all the backstory regarding Sigvald and all that kind of stuff like that. I'm so interested to learn about him and his you know, travels into the mortal realms. I almost said the new world. But uh, absolutely, please uh, stay tuned. Join me. I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons who, who make this possible. Uh, 2021 is the year where uh, I was able to go full-time with content creation and um i'll throw a picture up here pretty soon but my wife and my chunky chunky little cat and me we're all super appreciative of all of you so thank you so much for hanging out tuning in all the time and um let me know if there's anything you want to see in the comments down below we'll have a chat about that so thank you all so much and happy wargaming <laughs>